from the tome Utri usque cosmi maioris scilicet et minoris metaphysica physica atque technica historia in duo volumina secundum cosmi differentiam divisa autore Roberto Flood Robert Flood also known as Roberto de Fluctibus or Armigero and he was a doctor of medicine from Oxford this massive tome is divided into two volumes, the first being the History of the Greater Cosmos, divided into two tractates, first on metaphysics of the Greater Cosmos, and then the creation of the Earth, and then a description of the physics of the Greater Cosmos and the generations of plants and animals, etc., that followed them. This first tractate is very much of a judeo-christian bent and if you're interested in such things you can go ahead and read it i am primarily interested in the second book secundus de arte naturae simium macrocosmo producta et in nutrita et multiplicanda quios filias provincias hic anatomia vivia recentissimus nempe all of the trivium in quadrivium arts, and a few more. So arithmetic, music, geometry, the art of perspective, the art of picture drawing, the military art, the knowledge of motion and of time, cosmography, ast astrology, and geomancy. Wow, that's interesting. Um, so we're in this video, I want to show you the second book the, the beginning of the second book of the second tractate, uh, De Templo Musicae. So let's see if we can jump to it here. We'll go ahead and do this. Hopefully my ancient computer here won't break. Oh, we're pretty close. I'm looking for page 160. Fascinating illustrations this guy made. Um, Robert Flood was a well-known, and who knows if that was his real name, could have been a made-up name. Um, he was a Rosicrucian practitioner, so encoded lots of information about natural philosophy, and he developed his own um, mimic method for memorizing numbers and locations, which is what is depicted in these um, symbols here. Each of these stands for numbers. Um, he, he basically recorded the technique of what you call, I don't know, the mind palace, the idea of holding memories, um, in your mind, um, as physical locations for being ways to memorize, uh, large amounts of data, which he certainly did. So here we are, um, at the second book, Tractatus Secundi, De Templo Musicae and take a look at this lovely image. Soak it in for a moment. Templo Musicae. Encoded in this image is much information about archaic musicology. I'll tell you what I see briefly from the top down, and then we'll go ahead and read the Latin. So over here on the left side, we've got a nice um, steeple, top, vaulted archways, a dome, a turret, then another dome, then another turret, then more vaulted archways. Imagine the resonance that would take place of acoustic energy and perhaps other types of energy within this structure. And here we have a nice depiction of what might be imprinted in that dome as one stands in the middle looking up. An abstract depiction of the spirals of the sound forms, reminiscent of spiraling wave patterns like in your ear, the human ear, the cochlea, or the most primitive ancient musical instruments such as the conch shell or ram's horns, etc. And over here on the left, we have a depiction of Saturn, or Kronos, 
clearly the god of time, Father Time, as he's standing on top of a timekeeping device, below which is a clock, and below that is a diagram with music notation, divided into eight sections, with the numbers 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. These aren't the modern thought of like whole note, half note, quarter note, eighth note, um, rather, I'm not sure quite how to interpret this, but, you know, this was a, a idea of notation of lengths of notes in time. This is old, old music notation. And here we have the author, a depiction of himself, perhaps in the role of Orpheus, playing his lyre, looking very uh, demigodly at that. And interesting how this one stair is kind of offset in this dual entryway there. Not quite sure how to interpret that. Below which we have the god Apollo teaching the art of music notation, the system of that. And then we have this chart with lots of numbers and lines having to do with assigning numerology to specific music notes. Over here on the left, on this column, we have a vertical graphed depiction of the ratios between whole steps and half steps as you go up the musical scale. This is a capital gamma for G at the bottom. And then A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And this is essentially like Pythagoras's monochord but put in a vertical form. And so the ratios of the steps get closer together as you move towards the end, and then we have an octave and then another octave. At the very bottom, we have some, uh, some butt-naked lutherios making uh, musical instruments there, hammering away, having a grand old time while the master comes in, and he's like, what's going on? And then the rest of the image, a musical staff with, again, depictions of whole note, half note, half note, quarter note, quarter note, eighth, sixteenth, and thirty-second. These are not the same as modern musical notation. And corresponding to the horizontal lines in this chart, we have all these columns with these sliding scales of six notes, ut, re, mi, fa, sol, la, and then how they correspond together with these staffing marks. So depending on the position of this mark over here on the staff, then the notes on the staff would correspond to these rough notes in the scale, which you would carry over to this chart to see what they correspond to in reality, according to the art of Apollo. This is ancient musicology. And then the most exciting part, to me, is the top right of this image. You have these three towers, tures or turrets, of three different shapes and slightly different heights. One is square, the other is round, and is capped on top. The other is round and open on the top. And below these towers are sets of organ pipes, or fistulae, matching the geometry of the towers. This is saying something, perhaps, about... Uh, probably not square wave, sine wave, sawtooth wave, but... Well, perhaps having to do with that, we're talking about overtones, how those overtones would change with the shape of the resonating column of air, thus creating a different timbre or um, a slightly different sharpness or flatness, which is what he goes on to talk about. So that is his depiction of the temple of music. So let us read his introduction as he talks about it. 
templi praefigurati descriptio. De huius templi structura et situ mira canerent poetae, quorum intentiones circa fabulas et segmenta a situe versare solent. I mohoc subjectum multo avidus per sequerentur, cum ab eorum de abus nempe musis, nomen suum musica de riwaurit. Pro ut in eus eti mulogia habetur, veniam igitur ab illis peto, si poetici furoris stimulo et invententione, quam vis non mensura in huius templi descriptione, Meduci permitam. Templum igitorog musicum in montis parnasi, music, musarum sedis, sumitate fabrefactum imaginemur ex omniparte nemoribus campiique, ups, campiique, semiterna viriditate flores Cintibus decoratam et fontibus cristalinis, suaviter huc, atque illuc di manantibus circumdatum. Quorum murmure somnum placidum prae teruntibus saipe indutente. Avicolae illas partes fec frequentantes, memoraque incolentes basim, sive fundamentum, suis cantilensis, acutioribus, quo magis symphonicae, consonantias, sonorum diversas e fundant. Diligentur su suponera videntur, quarum me melodia ipsae nympae circa templum, saturi a silvando ducti per eius nemora. Pastores, panna erum duce, per campus coreas ducere comoverentur. Interhasigitur delitias divinum illud Apollonis donum instituitur, conservatur immo et omnium animatum adoratione colitur, quius omnes partes constituentes, pace et concordiae deditae, armoniae et symponiae mysteriis, coeli et elementorum concordantias includentibus. Ita ad invicem alligantur, ut totum universum perire necese sit, et ad nihilium discordiae litibus redigi, prius quam eius consonantiae aut deficiant aut corrumpantur. Quius? Quius templi igitur praeses sive dea est concordia, ineffabilis concordia, entis entium magna proles, quius adorationae paruers crescunt. Eusque contemptu magna dilabuntur. Custos eius sive sacertos est talia, noem musarum suavissima, quius documentis concordiae misteria occulta peregrinatibus supplice, suppliciterque eius oracula petentibus explicantur. Cupitis ergo oculis animadvertent scientificus scientificus quam libet huia structurae partem, nec eos minimam portiunculam contemnet, quia tamen qua libet parte, quam in eus toto movetur, anima illa Apollonis harmonica, et spiritus ille musicae, animalium anima suaviter per mocens et laetificans per omnes huius structurae nervos more zephidi solitus est aflare rapiens secum hominis cupiditates. Daemonumque malignorum rapiem sua suavitate conspectens, ipsos quasi humanitate quadam imbuens. Avide in quam Intuearis maioris templituris spiralem re voluntionem, quae denotat aeris motum postquam sono vel voce reprecutitur. Dua januae aures auditus organa, significant, sine quibus sonitus editus non percipitur, nec in hoc templum sit ingressio nisi per ipsas. Secundo loco observabis tres eus dures minores, 
notarum B, that is the flat symbol, notarum B, rotundi, daleth, that is natural, quadrati et naturales dispositiones reprehensantes, et cum arum observatione parele, par, parallelogramma tria acute inspicienda sunt, quod, quod libet sub qual libet, qual libet turi sibi naturaliter relata aedificatur. Diversas prae dictarum notarum naturas, appellationes et locos in sistimate demonstrantia. Orum autem parel, parallelorum fistulae seo organa in eorum sumitate expressae, vocum et sonorum quios libet parallelogrammi differentias denontant. Nec contemnenda est columnae quios templi divisio, cum monocordi proportiones veras consonantiarumque. Species diversas de lineabit, orologium etiam sedulo est ponderan ponderandum, ne tempus in opinato labatur, aut pede nimis tarto, hoc est nulla observata proportione aut mensura progrediatur. Hoc igitur orologium est quasi regularis temporis no tularum custos, et amplicissimum simplicis earum valoris speculum. Cur etiam non inspicendus erit commensuralis quantitatis triangulus, qui diversitatem proportiones temporum tam in diminutione, quam in augmentatione rimetur, notularumque perfectionum et in, uh, in perfectionem luculentur demonstreret. Symponicus quoque intervalorum systematis triangulus, tamquam omnium relinquorum si Sinale mysterium, finale mysterium. Cura haud exigua est intro spiciendus, cum per illum et ex illo consonantiae musicae omnes de promantur, sine quibus nulla sit symponia, super quo triangolo depingitur historia, qua istarum concordiarum inventiones ratio explicatur, scilicit Pythagorae observatio, qui per fabri, qui justam ferrari officiam forte fortuna transiens, et ex quatuor marculorum ictibus sonorum congruentium perspiciens, marculos illos ponderari iusit, et quorum ponderum differentis tres pro portiones, musicas, seo consonantias, dia tesaron, dia pente et dia passon, invenit, quas magis perspicue per trium templi fenestrarum literas, literarumque connexiones explicavimus, quae etiam ad compositionem harmoniae symponiae cae aeque conducunt, ac tringulus ille symponiacus, has inquam quios templi partes, Cupide lector, si sagaciter inspexeris, omnium eustem misteriorum edis particeps, et in scientia hac prae celenti magister perquam expertus. Iterum eque. Templo musicae.